Okay, let us continue two more examples in balancing of chemical equations that is if you go for example 5 this is called chemical displacement chemical displacement reaction chemical displacement reaction here if you take iron oxide Fe2O3 solid plus aluminum solid aluminum solid it gives iron plus Fe2O3 plus energy Fe2O3 plus energy this is a displacement reaction this is a displacement reaction because what is interesting here is you can find that here this is iron oxide this is ferric oxide where the iron is in the form of oxide iron is in the form of oxide this oxide of iron is getting reduced to the molten iron it is reduced to molten iron red hot iron the temperature is not less than the temperature is not less than 1300 degrees centigrade here aluminium the purpose of adding aluminium metal to this ferric oxide or iron oxide is to behave as a reducing agent because it is reducing agent all reducing agents they get oxidized all reducing agents they get oxidized that's why aluminium it is reducing the oxide of iron to the molten metal of iron and by itself it is getting oxidized that is aluminium oxide this is otherwise this whole reaction otherwise it is also called goldsmith's otherwise it is also called goldsmith's aluminothermic process so in this goldsmith's aluminothermic process if you balance the chemical equation if we carefully analyze the number of atoms present in the reactant side of the ferric oxide and the number of atoms present in the aluminium oxide that is Al2O3 we have two aluminium atoms and three oxygens in aluminium oxide and in ferric oxide we have two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms so here if you want to balance the number of number of irons we have two irons on the reactant side and we have only one iron on the product side so thereby first i am taking the molar coefficient as two number of irons thereby in the reactant side and in the product side they are balanced and here and here if you take the number of oxygens we have three oxygens in the reactant side and also we have three oxygens on the product side so number of oxygens are balanced on the reactant side and product side but we need to balance the number of aluminium atoms so here we have two aluminium atoms and here we have only one aluminium atom so therefore place two as a molar coefficient besides aluminium atom the entire reaction is going to get balanced last one last but not the least if you go for if you go for that is precipitation reactions precipitation precipitation reactions take two salts barium sulfate barium sulfate aqueous it's a salt sodium chloride it's a salt okay this is salt one and this is salt two okay take one small test tube add sufficient amount of water okay this NaCl aqueous and what you do is just mix both these salts mixing and little amount of heating okay so immediately you find that here this barium sulfate reacts with sodium chloride to give barium chloride barium chloride aqueous but this is insoluble salt plus barium barium chloride insoluble salt plus sodium sulfate aqueous so to balance the equation we have one sulfate here also we have one sulfate here we have two sodiums here we have one sodium and one chlorine here we have two sodiums and two chlorine so therefore 
plus 2 besides the sodium chloride the reaction is going to get balanced. Now, we will switch on to the next topic of the chemical reaction. If you go for a chemical reaction based on this is somewhat like the third major part of the discussion in the chapter chemical reactions and chemical equation. This is the third major topic which is under our discussion based on based on the energy changes energy changes taking place in chemical based on the energy changes taking place in a chemical reaction here they are classified into two types exothermic reactions and exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. So, if you go for exothermic reactions, a chemical reaction which is accompanied by loss or release of energy. The word exo, the word endo. Here, exo means release or loss of energy. The word endo means absorb or gain of energy. So, the chemical reaction, so the chemical reactions which are accompanied by the release or loss of energy are called exothermic reactions. In exothermic reactions, what is the key word which you have to remember? The key word which you have to remember is exo exo means release or loss of energy. Endothermic reactions, the key word is endo, endo means absorb or gain of energy. A chemical reaction which is accompanied by absorption or gain of energy is called endothermic reaction. So, if you go for exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions, there are plenty of examples are there. If you go for exothermic reactions, if you go for exothermic reaction examples if we take first one all combustion reactions all combustion reactions are exothermic combustion reactions means we can take that is CH4 plus O2 gas gives rise to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Remember always in exothermic reactions the release or loss of energy is shown in the product side. All combustion reactions. Sometimes all neutralizations. All neutralization reactions are definitely exothermic. All neutralization reactions are definitely exothermic. I can say because it is neutralization reaction, acid reacts with a base reversible reaction to form salt plus water plus energy is the best example of the exothermic reaction. Sometimes the chemical oxidation, okay, oxidation reactions, not all, but some examples. Oxidation reactions also they can they can be oxidation reactions is an is an exception because oxidation reactions can be endothermic reactions or exothermic reactions, but there are some specific examples where we can correlate them with the exothermic reactions. For example, the best example is that is complete oxidation 
sufficient amount of oxygen when it reacts with carbon solid it gives carbon dioxide carbon dioxide gas plus energy carbon dioxide gas plus energy so <coughs> all this comes under the examples of exothermic reaction now we will study about the examples of endothermic reaction let us study the examples of endothermic chemical reaction so endothermic reactions examples if you take in this examples if you take that is a the best example is formation of nitric oxide from nitrogen gas and oxygen gas so if you take one mole of nitrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas plus energy gives rise to that is nitric oxide gas balance the equation two mole two nitrogen atoms in one nitrogen molecule again two oxygen atoms in one oxygen molecule take two here because you are adding the energy on the reactant side this comes under the endothermic reaction and it's an example of endothermic reaction or you can just simply say if you want to shift this energy towards the product side then n2 gas plus o2 gas gives rise to 2NO gas instead of this is plus of energy so bring it to the product side it becomes minus of energy one more example you can take that is H2 gas plus I2 gas H2 gas plus I2 gas that is one mole of hydrogen gas reacts with one mole of iodine gas to give two moles of hydrogen iodide gas with the absorption of energy absorption of energy sometimes even if you take direct salts salts also you take ammonium chloride ammonium chloride solid if you dissolve it in water liquid it forms ammonium chloride of aqueous and instead of releasing of energy it will absorb or will gain energy so it comes under the endothermic reaction all chemical decompositions all chemical de decompositions means for example the best and the famous example for endothermic reaction in terms of the salts mineral compounds if you take that is the famous example if you take limestone limestone calcium carbonate solid it is limestone calcium carbonate solid upon heating it gives calcium oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas yes it needs large amount of energy this is chemical decomposition it's an endothermic reaction likewise you can take potassium chlorate kclo3 solid that is heat we get potassium chloride solid plus oxygen gas so you can balance the chemical equation in the meantime you can see that there are two oxygens and we here we have three oxygens so place two over here and place three over here the as a molar coefficient two and three are the molar coefficients so you have balanced the number of potassiums in the in the reactant side we have two potassiums and two chlorines and in the reactant side we have six oxygen atoms but here yes we have three to the six oxygen atoms oxygens are balanced but number of potassiums potassiums are not balanced two potassiums and two chlorines so take two here potassiums are balanced and chlorines are also balanced the reaction is balanced it's a chemical decomposition so therefore chemical decomposition heating a salt requires large amount of energy to break the bonds present in it so thereby this potassium chloride chlorate by breaking the bonds it is giving two new compounds in the form of products that is potassium chloride and oxygen that is two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen gas and of course for this large amount of energy is needed okay so these are some of the important and useful examples of the endothermic 
the action.